All right, hello again. Thank you, Clark, for your music on this day. And, and of course, Christmas being my favorite season, I always enjoy Christmas music. Uh, I've said for years that theologically, Easter is, is the much more important and significant day in Christian history, but it doesn't have the good music. <laughs> I'm sorry, Christmas does. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying our our YouTube broadcast here on this uh, Advent season of 2021, and I thank you for joining us. You heard Marty and, and V, otherwise known as Martha Kay, and Veronica, otherwise known as the Joyful Hosannas, light the second candle today. They said, we light it in peace. And I, her words were interesting because, they, now they didn't write this, this was something that, that I found and distributed to the people that have been reading. The comment in there about when we think of peace, we think of, of, of leopards and this and that lying down with goats and sheep and kids. And I found myself thinking how appropriate that is for what I'm about to say. Because all I want for Christmas is peace. Well, notice what I have written up there after that. You have it. After all, what do we celebrate during the Christmas season, or as the church calls it, Advent, we, we celebrate the coming. That's what Advent means. We celebrate the coming of the Lord and Savior. We celebrate the coming of Messiah. And what did Isaiah prophesy that Messiah would be? He calls him, among other things, the Prince of Peace. How many times have you asked in your lifetime, or you've heard somebody say, if the Prince of Peace has come, why don't we have peace in the world? Why is there still war? Why am I afraid to walk out of my house at nighttime, if that happens to be your story? I just remembered a pastor buddy of mine that uh, actually I worked with. He hired me as a youth pastor in Southern California. Milt was known for staying in his office to 9 or 10 o'clock at night when nobody else was around. One night he walked out of the office, got hit over the head. And the office got robbed and so did he. And when he didn't come home, his wife called the cops. They found him unconscious up on top of the second floor. That's not peace. <laughs> Want to know something? Also didn't stop him from staying there to 9 or 10 o'clock because I'm not letting some mugger stop me. <laughs> now that is peace. Now let me explain that to you. Let me explain that to you. Last week we were in John chapter 14. This week we're in John chapter 14. A little bit later from where we were last week. In fact, it says, chapter, uh, oh, it does say 25 to 27. Okay, I, was, I thought it just said 27. I was going to say, I'm going to verse 25. But I want to read verse 25 of chapter 14. All this I have spoken while still with you. You have to read the previous things, including what we read last week. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you, including those comments we said last week, the greater things that I do, you will do because I go to the Father. The Counselor will remind you of everything I have said to you. And then he says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I think perhaps Milt Weissauer was correct. I'm not going to let this stop me from going into my office at late at night. We celebrate the Prince of Peace. And Jesus here says, peace I leave with you. And then we go off of what I've already described. We say, well, wait a minute, though. There is no peace in the world. This stuff's all a lie. Where is the peace? Do we understand what Jesus said here? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. And then he says, I do not give to you as the world gives. This is one thing I think the church needs to listen to and remember and maybe even learn what he's saying here. I give you peace, but it's not as the world gives. Herein lies the problem. The world's idea of peace, especially the United States of America's idea of peace, 
is the absence of conflict. When there is no conflict, we say we have peace. And that ends up becoming our definition of what peace is. I have no conflict, I am in peace. And so we look around the world and what have we seen centuries of in human society? Conflict. Conflict, war, crime, rape, I mean, miserable stuff. I have a book at home called 25 Years of, I'm 25 years, that'd be wonderful. 25 centuries of human warfare. 25 centuries. There hasn't been a century gone by. There hasn't been a half century gone by. There hasn't been a decade gone by in human history where there hasn't been a war or a conflict somewhere in this globe of which we live. I have another book called War in Peace. No, not the Russian book, War and Peace. It's War in Peace. It is a book about the 20th century about when we believed there was peace because World War I ended, at the end of World War I, what did we have? Peace. Then we had World War II, and then when it ended, we had what? Peace. And then we had Korea, when it ended, we had what? Peace. And then, you see where I'm going with it? What this book examines is what went on in other parts of the world, not involving the United States, where throughout the, the, the 20th century, there was war somewhere on the planet, even when some of us said, oh, we have peace because we just won the big war. We are a society of conflict. We are a civilization of conflict. Jesus says, I don't give you peace as the world gives me. The world's understanding, everything's great, we have peace. That is not the biblical understanding of peace. In the Hebrew and in the Greek, there are two words that both translate peace. And what's really interesting about both these words is in those languages, both the words have the same definition. You probably know the word for peace in Hebrew. You know what it is? Shalom. 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 The Arabic of that, you've, you've heard, you may not even know it. You, ever, you could be watching a movie or television. You can watch Lawrence of Arabia, and one person walks up to the next and says, Salam. That's the same word, folks. In fact, what's interesting is Jerusalem, Yeru Shalom, was originally known as Salem, as we call it. That's really the Arabic word, it was Salam. It means peace. When David captures it, they renamed it Yeru Shalam using the Hebrew word, and it means the city of peace. Shalom. It's <laughs> one reason why people in Israel, people in Hawaii are often confused because they use the same greeting for both hello and goodbye. Shalom, shalom. And of course in Hawaii, what is it? Aloha. 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 Wait a minute, I just got here. Why are you saying goodbye? No, aloha means hello. Well, in, in, in Israel, shalom is hello, shalom is goodbye. You greet each other by saying peace, and you say goodbye by saying peace. Shalom is peace. There's a tradition that goes on in Israel that I love. Uh, Larry's been there, and I'm, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. When it's a Friday afternoon, of course, the Sabbath begins on Friday evening. And from Friday afternoon into Friday evening, whenever you see somebody and you're, you're turning to leave, what do you say? Do you remember? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Have a peaceful Sabbath. I, there's just something about that. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Mariah and I were walking in Arden Fair Center a number of years ago, and there was a woman there selling a, a, a facial and body cream that was from Israel and it was using the mud of the Dead Sea. Something else Larry knows very, <laughs> very personally. Didn't you rub it all over yourself? Oh gosh, I like people rubbing mud all over yourself. Stop it! <laughs> I've never been one to play mud pies. But, but she was selling this product and she was talking about how it came from the Dead Sea and this and that. And, and, and when we finished, I, I asked her, I said, are you Jewish? And she looked at me, she said, what? I said, are you Jewish? 
Now, somebody asked you that question, given the history, especially in the 20th century, that may be a dangerous question, but she finally said, yes, I am. I said, okay. It was 15 minutes to five. I said, Shabbat Shalom. Her face lit up. And she said, oh, Shabbat Shalom to you. And these two dudes who I didn't even know were there, all of a sudden, boom, their heads come out around the wall. They go, Shabbat Shalom. I mean, <laughs> it was like it was Christmas Day. I have a peaceful Sabbath. I love it. And when you think about the history of Israel, which has had anything but peace in its history, to still bring a smile on somebody's face when you say, have a peaceful Sabbath, has something to do about the meaning of peace in the Hebrew language. And I still haven't described it yet. The Greek word for peace, you guys know what that one is? Now that one, you don't know, you don't hear it as often. It's a rain aid, a rain aid. So next time you see somebody, you go, hey, a rain aid, and they may or may not know what it is you just said to them. The word a rain aid and the word shalom address what Jesus is saying here. He says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, I give to you. Shalom and a rain aid both mean peace in the midst of conflict. Total opposite of what most people walk around when they say, well, the Prince of Peace, my, my eye, because look at all the wars we still have. Peace in the middle of the wars. Peace in the middle of crime. Peace in the middle of disease. Uh, this is the peace that Jesus says, I give you, not as the world gives. This is what we have from the Savior. This is what we have from the Prince of Peace. Peace in the midst of conflict. <laughs> Those of us here in Aldersgate have been mourning since Tuesday when we received the news that Bob Knox died of COVID. We've been praying for him for the last two weeks. Within 40 minutes of his death, all of his family, save his grandson Marvin, were there in the hospital with him. And then the last 40 minutes, Marvel was sitting there and, and he died. That's a loss that all of us feel. I've heard a lot of people use the word heartbroken. And it's true. I wrote a text to Marva and to, to Marlo and to Anissa said, you know, a lot of people say at a time of a funeral, this was a good man. For Bob Knox, that's not a cliche. I talked to Marva Thursday morning. She said something to me that rang in my ears, especially talking about she didn't know what I was going to preach on this Sunday. She says, you know, through all of this, Bob never complained. He never said, why me? He never says, oh, this isn't fair. Why do I have it and you don't? Uh, I'll be honest, I heard my mom say that to my dad. As she was dying of emphysema. When she had a two pack a day habit, my dad had a three and a half pack a day habit. She says, this isn't fair. You should have the disease, not me. You smoke more than me. She said, Bob didn't say that about anything. Bob continued to be Bob. Bob's life was surrounded around Jesus Christ. And in the midst of a situation where he didn't know whether he was going home or not, he had what? Peace. God's peace. Not as the world gives. My wife has told me she will always remember the last thing that she heard Bob say. Bob called our phone and left a message. And the very last thing he said was, hey, I'll see you when I see you. She says, you know what I think Bob meant by that? Either I'm coming out of here or I'm not. Either way, I'll see you when I see you. Because the promise of everlasting life is here. Peace in the midst of conflict. I've shared this story a number of times before. When I was going to college, I had a friend of mine who taught history at Folsom Prison, 
It's kind of interesting, years later, a number of us here from Aldersgate have been involved in Kairos and Folsom Prison. And when I go through there, I always wonder, where exactly was Terry the day this event happened that he told me about? He was leaving the prison, and lights and bells went off, sirens started going off, and all of a sudden he realized he was surrounded by a light of, on the tower, and he looked up, and a guy had a gun pointed right at his head. And Terry said, put that gun away, I'm not a prisoner. And the man with the rifle said, I know, that's why I'm aiming this at you. I don't want you to aim that at me. And he said, sir, as long as I'm aiming this light at you, I mean this gun at you, you will not be harmed. Because anybody who comes near you knows I'm gonna shoot him. Terry looked up at this guy. He looked around at the chaos going around him. And he sat down what we call Indian style, and laid his briefcase in front of him and just watched the mayhem going on. He saw a couple guys come close to him. He saw the light, saw the rifle turn and ran away. Terry told me, I think I now understand what Jesus meant when he said, the peace I give you is not like the world gives. I was in the middle of mayhem and death, and I wasn't afraid because there was somebody watching out at me. I was surrounded by the light. It reminded me of the very promises of God. Where's peace? We have it. All I want for Christmas is peace. Brothers and sisters, we have it. The Prince of Peace has come. And each and every one of us, through the presence of the Holy Spirit, have the ability to share the same peace, the same peace that Bob had. I knew another man who was dying. He was very frightened, especially for his wife. They'd been married for over 60 years. And the one thing that he was worried about was his wife. What's going to happen to his wife when he dies? And I, I came in to see him, and I, I, I would see this frightened man laying there in bed. And I remember one day I said to him, I said, Clyde, you don't have to worry about Bessie because you know your son Chuck will take care of her. And he looked at me and he said, I know. He says, now that you say that, he says, that's the best man I could have ever had for a son-in-law. The next time I came to see him, about a week later, I saw a different man. No longer did I see a guy holding tight the sheets around his bed. The man was laying there and he saw me, he says, ah, oh, Scott, come on in. Whole different man. And so I said to him, Chuck, not Chuck, sorry, it's a son in law. I said, Clyde, what's going on? What do you mean? A week ago you were scared to death. And he says, Yes, I was, wasn't I? He says, I didn't need to be. He said, Jesus came by and talked to me and told me everything is going to be fine. Skeptics will say that's nonsense. People of faith say, wow, the man received peace in the midst of conflict. That's the peace we have. The next time you ask yourself, how come we don't have peace? Well, that's one reason our understanding of peace is not Jesus' understanding of peace. Our understanding of peace is not the scripture text understanding of shalom and reine. In the middle of conflict, I will have. But you know, there's another thing. And I only came to this in the last two days, I mean, about addressing this in this sermon. I have often said that I like it when people take a little bit of Jesus, but they don't take the whole book. Uh, I was joking with I, my, my buddy dude, Glenn Rayleigh, just, just last Saturday night, we were meeting for dinner as Francis and I were coming back from Thanksgiving with, with our family. And uh, we were mentioning the baby Jesus, and I asked him, have you ever seen the movie Talladega Nights? Now, I, I don't like it, I'll tell you that right now. But there's a scene there that if anybody's ever seen Talladega Nights, they know what I'm talking about. The dinner scene, and I looked it up on my phone and I showed it to dude, he'd never seen this. And, and, and they're getting around praying, and and, and the main character, played by Will Ferrell, starts praying. He says, oh, baby Jesus, little bald-headed baby Jesus, 
in the swaddling cloths. We thank you for our dinner. Oh, little baby Jesus. And finally, his wife pops up in the middle of the, of the prayer and says, you know, he grew up. He became a man. And the other guy at the table says, yeah, he had a beard. And the other guy says, yeah, he died. To which the main character says, shut up. I'll pray to the Jesus I want to pray to. Well, in reality, folks, Jesus isn't just one part that we feel good about. I love it when I hear people say, well, Jesus was a good teacher. But when you look at some of the weird things Jesus had to say, we go, really, what was so good about that? One man even calls him good, and Jesus says, why do you call me good? That's an interesting challenge. So we have to take the entirety of Jesus, not just the part that we like. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 34, is a verse people don't often quote. Jesus said, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. What? He's the Prince of Peace. Almighty Father. All that stuff we sing about when we sing Handel music. What do you mean? Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. We don't quote that one. And the words here of Jesus for many people, including some people I've known who I've shared their stories with you in Bible study and in sermons, knows what it means to take on the name Jesus and to be kicked out of your family by your family. Jesus isn't just all about love, folks. Jesus isn't just all about grace. Where was the grace and love if you were one of the ones being chased out of the temple by a whip the day that Jesus overturned the tables? We need to take the entirety of Jesus, folks. And we need to take his words and we need to listen to him. I did not come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And by the way, the peace that I bring, said Jesus, is not like the world brings. So if you are having a struggle with that question, why do we celebrate the Prince of Peace when there is no peace? Brothers and sisters, we have peace. That's from the Holy Spirit, and it is in the midst of conflict. If you are waiting for the absence of conflict, you're waiting for the wrong thing. I'm sorry, I got to tell you that. <clears throat> but people like Bob Knox remind me of what Jesus said. I've shared many times people like Arlene McLean, who would. <laughs> I don't know if angry or upset is the right word, but she would tell me, you know, when people come and they start weeping at my bed, I go, what are you crying for? Either I'm going to revive and live here with you or I'm going to die and I get to see my Lord and my husband. Where is the problem? That's peace, folks. Regardless of what happens, that's peace. I knew a 92-year-old woman. She was a wonderful woman. She's about four foot 11, <laughs> Armenian woman. And a lot of people don't realize or don't know that she was very beneficial in me buying the Newport convertible I have. She loaned me money to buy it. So the first person I showed the car to when I got it was her. And after Bible study, she climbed in. She couldn't see over the dashboard. <laughs> and she climbs and she looks at me, 92 years old. She says, peel out. I said, what? She goes, peel out. I love it when cars burn their tires. <laughs> so I put my left foot on the brake. I hammered the accelerator and I released it and I gave her what she wanted. And she, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. 92 years old. Later on that same year, she had to have surgery. It was the first time in her life she'd been in the hospital since the birth of her children. And I'll never forget it the look on her face as she was on the gurney and they were rolling her in to the hospital. She had a big smile on her face. She said, Scott, I'll see you soon. 
But if not here, you know I'll still see you. It's the same thing Bob left on the phone. I'll see you when I see you. Peace in the midst of conflict. Because the Prince of Peace has come. If you find yourself in struggle, Confess that to the Lord, and maybe he'll pull a client on you. Come and visit you with the Spirit and tell you everything's okay. This COVID stuff will pass, but I know this from experience. Something will come after it. We still have peace. We still pray, Lord, come. But if we're waiting for peace, brothers and sisters, it's here. When? Do we begin to participate in it? God, we thank you for your promises. And forgive us for the times that we put on you, expectations that we have that come from our world. Not unlike the people of Israel wanting to see the pillar of fire and the cloud of smoke. And since Jesus didn't bring it, they all gathered together and said, crucify him because we have an expectation you're not getting. We have an expectation about peace. And we want to get it in our understanding. We say, oh Lord, where are you? God, we thank you that you are here. We thank you that you poured out your spirit on us so that we might have peace even in the midst of conflict. Lord, we thank you for that, especially in this season. Lead us. The Prince of Peace has come. And we have peace. Lord, we thank you for it. We pray it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. As I was praying, I had a memory. Uh, I mentioned my mom getting angry at my dad because she was the one that was sick. That all worked out in her life. The last 15 months of my mom's life was wonderful, I gotta tell you. And when we had a funeral, Neil Nomberg would perform my mom's funeral. When we had a funeral, it was kind of interesting because in the middle of the funeral, we were crying and then we were laughing our heads off. And we were crying and we were laughing our heads off. And my mom had some music she wanted played, and some of it was pretty bizarre. But one of them, we were all laughing, what the is this? But it's what my mom wanted. And somebody made a comment about that afterwards. He goes, look, look, I don't get this. I said, look it. All of us here, at least those of us who have made a confession to Jesus, knows that, yes, my mother is dead and we're sad now, but we have peace knowing we will see her again. We have what? Peace. Peace. Not as the world. Be blessed. Go forth with God. Know that God, our Father, and Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, and their peace go with us. Be blessed. Isn't it?